Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You're just in time as we continue our health discussion on World Kidney Day 2021 and multimedia health specialist, Dr. Darren Green. He is with us in studio. And next we want to talk about the importance of a healthy, balanced diet and which foods you should look out for if you have kidney disease. Now, Graham, you had a very important question. And, and are you affected by, by age or do your kidneys kind of deteriorate? Yeah. They want to live forever. But as, as happens with many different systems in the body, aging has, it has an effect on many of them, just like it does on bone, muscle mass, hormone levels, etc. So your kidney function certainly is something you want to preserve as long as possible with some really good habits that you can influence the outcome, you know. So yeah, it does get affected with aging negatively. Oh, well, I love that you put emphasis on good habits. Yes. Because I do know your diet also plays a very important <laughs> role. Now, how does diet and living that whole holistic life and exercise, you know, better your kidneys. Yeah, so often what's good for your heart is good for your kidneys. So if you think about it, for the kidneys to function well, they need a healthy supply of blood, which brings with it, obviously, oxygen, nutrients, etc. And just as the blood vessels in the rest of the body are dependent on being open, the blood vessels that go to the kidneys also need to be open and not lined with things like thick cholesterol blocks mm -hmm. where, that, where that lumen or that space is, becomes narrowed and where the hydration status or the amount of water you're ingesting allows the blood to actually flow. So that sounds pretty simple, but that's what it comes down to. So your kidneys are in need of exercise, just like your heart is. And that will ensure, obviously, that the supply of blood is, is good to the kidneys. So, too, we, we mentioned one of the functions of the kidneys early on in salt balance, yes. fluid balance as well. So the importance of, of that balance between the sodium and the potassium and the chloride, ions, etc., and the, and, and the spin-offs of all that to the different body systems, like the muscles, for example, when it comes to things like calcium, are vital. So your diet is important. The amount of salt you ingest is very important. Salt increases blood pressure, causes hypertension, which is one of the, the leading causes of kidney disease. Hypertension, diabetes, polycystic kidneys and then drugs and toxins. Then drugs and toxins. I, I want to get onto that in just a moment, but um, all of this being said, what foods then should we be eating to support healthy kidneys? Good. So your body requires protein for many things. You mentioned protein just yeah. now. The three Ps, man. <laughs> protein, protein and protein. So yeah. You require, obviously, and depending on, on, on the function of your kidney, you would then be limited to your specific diet. So if you have, uh, for example, advanced kidney disease, your diet would have to change in terms of uh, what you ingest. The amount of salt you, you ingest, for example, is important. Even the amount of fluid you take in, you can't drink the same amount of water per day as you would if you had uh, oh. advanced kidney disease, because you'll have fluid overload. Your body can't get rid of it. And then, for example, also protein is an essential component. So we speak about things like eggs, good avo, that kind of thing, the nuts, uh, etc., as well. So you've got to look at those components that contribute towards the fluid balance of the kidney. Very interesting. Now, Dr. Dan Green, there are a lot of people that are watching this that have issues with their kidneys and their, you know, kidney disease. When it comes to the treatment plans and options, what are what How is available? How do you treat you? Yeah. Yes. So we actually measure your your kidney function. Fortunately, there are ways of doing that. And uh, part of the diagnosis of kidney disease is a quick urine test, looking for protein leaking into the urine uh, or blood, for example, that also sneaks into the urine. And then with that, we do a blood test which me measures the filtration rate of the kidneys. It's called a GFR and a creatinine level. And those two are very important with a lab, simple lab test. So they draw the blood, send it to, to the laboratory, and you get a value. That tells you often what percentage of kidney function you have uh, left or have lost. Okay. And according to that, then your, your staging of kidney disease will be staged according to stage zero to four, for example. Okay. Uh, and that would determine what your treatment options are. For advanced kidney disease, when you get to stage uh, four and five, we look at that GF, GFR value that I spoke about, under 20, where you'd then be considered for what's called RRT, which is a renal replacement therapy. And that involves obviously being worked up while you're getting dialysis sometimes, or being put on a list for a kidney transplant. Transplant, wow, yeah. okay. I've always wondered about that, because I know Selena Gomez had a, a kidney transplant yes. a few years ago, and she got it from one of her best friends. If, if, if let's say, a sibling needs a, a, a a kidney transplant, I good know point. that the, the siblings are always a good match or family members are a good match. How 
can the person who's doing the donating or considering it still function and have a normal life? You can indeed live completely uh, normally with one kidney oh, wow. because that one can take over the filtration, obviously. You just have to be very vigilant in looking after that one kidney. kidney for because sure. if that one goes, <laughs> then obviously... You yeah, have there is options. no plan yeah. B. I've got to ask, and this is quite a personal question, because obviously after my back operation, I've had to, for the longest time, be quite heavily medicated, pain medication, anti-inflammatories, oh, which amazing. seem to, yeah, seem to really raise alarm bells. Yes. And certainly being one of my biggest concerns, how do we fortify the body when you have to be on medication? What, what, how do you question. manage that? So drugs and medications and kidney disease, great topic. Uh, we often put onto antihypertensive drugs to help protect the kidneys in terms of being on an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, they call them. Uh, when it comes to anti-inflammatories, using them prophylactically for pain that's going to occur the next day, it's a massive red flag in the sports medicine industry that sure. I work in, an emergency medicine, because what happens is in the absence of enough fluid and water in the body, they, they, that medication, the an non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, cause damage to the kidney cells that can be irreversible if not corrected within a certain time period. Wow. Sure. On big events and endurance events, I have runners, marathon runners, mountain bikers, all popping an anti-inflammatory sometimes without the knowledge of it damaging their kidneys possibly permanently. So a very good point you raise. Well, wow. um, we're going to continue taking your questions. So if you've got anything that you'd like to, to pose to the doctor um, around kidney health, um, I'm, I mean, you can answer anything just about it. Um, but today we are focusing on kidney health and the awareness thereof. Please let us know on our Expresso Morning Show Facebook page. We'd love to take those comments and questions.